driver and Don Lewis coming to you from beautiful Florida. And today our question comes to us from Dina Hobbs. And Dina has this question. What is the one thing that most contributes to the effectiveness of magic? And what is the one thing that most detracts from that effectiveness, making magic likely to fail? And when I first saw this question, my first thought was, well, there's no one answer. There are so many variables. There are so many things that affect this. And then I realized, no, they're not. The one thing that most contributes to the effectiveness of magic is, in fact, just one thing, the magician. And the one thing that most detracts from the effectiveness of magic, making it likely to fail, is also just one thing, the magician. Everything else though not exactly irrelevant, is far less important and can be overcome by the magician. Anything external, anything that is or is not present that might otherwise affect the situation can be overcome by the magician. So the thing that both creates the effectiveness and destroys the effectiveness in the end is the magician. Now, from my point of view, magic is a very natural process. It's something that we all do in every moment that we're alive, but in an unconscious way. It is the raising, shaping, and directing of energy and creation of the world around us. And it's something, again, that I believe we all do. When we practice magic as such, we learn to do it consciously. And I would compare this to breathing. Breathing is something we all do and are mostly not terribly conscious of. But there are a number of metaphysical schools of thought that place a great deal of emphasis on breathing and the idea of taking conscious control of your breathing and that this will make spiritual differences and magical differences in your life. Uh, I would say it's very much the same principle. For most people, magic may be as natural as breathing, but it's equally unconscious. And you need only look at how most people seem to feel about their lives to see that without the conscious component, it doesn't necessarily go all that terribly well in terms of what people think they want. When we learn to do it consciously, we can focus it much more constructively on our personal goals and desires, but we also have to be very clear on what those are. So why is the magician the most important aspect of effective magic? Well, the magician is the one doing it. And the reason that the magician is also the most uh, important aspect of magic not being effective is because the magician must know who they are, what they want, and how to go about it. Most people have tremendous amounts of internal conflict in terms of what they really want and what they really feel, and they never really address this. And a magical and spiritual path should address these issues because you must be clear on them to get a good outcome to the magic that you're doing your beliefs, your expectations, uh, your ideas of what is and is not possible are all very important in terms of your results from magic. If you don't believe you can do it, you will not be able to do it because you won't be able to let it into your own life because you don't believe it's possible. And if you do believe you can do it, well, then you have a much better chance. It's not necessarily guaranteed. There are other variables but it is a possibility. Most people have tremendous amounts of blockages, and this is why shadow work is such an important thing. And the most obvious of those blockages is the one I was just describing. And that is the classic example of the person who wants the perfect job but doesn't believe they could ever get it, or they want a wonderful romance but they don't believe that's a possibility in this world, and so forth. They have crossed wires between what they want and what they believe to be possible. Sometimes also, it's crossed wires as to what they even want. They may think they want a wonderful romance, but inside they think that romance is horrible and always leads to a bad outcome. Naturally, they're going to have trouble manifesting a romance. They may believe they want to uh, have a great deal of money, but inside they think of money as a burden. They'll have trouble getting money. Uh, these are examples of blockages that people might have. There are also uh, blockages in terms of what people believe they can do as an individual. There are blockages in terms of what people believe they deserve. And if you believe you don't deserve something, you will have difficulty creating it magically. Uh, these are examples of why the magician is both the thing that makes magic effective and the thing that can make it ineffective. 
And so for the magician, you must be clear on who you are, on what you want, as well as the techniques of consciously manifesting it. Just knowing the techniques is not really enough to have consistently good outcomes if you don't also know yourself. Obviously also, if you know yourself but you don't know the techniques, uh, you are not necessarily going to have a lot of headway either, although some people just unconsciously have this ability, I would say because they've developed it in previous lifetimes. And that can be either good or bad. When a person has facility with magic, but not in a conscious way, uh, they sometimes manifest the very things they don't want because they're not clear on themselves. So, in undertaking magic, you not only have to learn the techniques, but you really have to learn about yourself, look for your blockages, and change them. Some people have more energy blocked in these ways than they have free-flowing in their system. And the process of working through the shadow can be a very serious long-term undertaking, but again, it depends on the person. And the main message that I have in so many of my vlogs is also relevant here, and that is that everyone is different and individual. But in every case, the magician is the most important aspect of the effectiveness of magic. So that would be my answer. I hope you find it helpful, and until next time, may you blessed be. Hello, this is Reverend Don Lewis coming to you for Pagans Tonight Radio. Pagans Tonight Radio is an online radio network with different hosts and different shows seven nights a week. There's something for every taste, including Spanish language programming on Saturday evening. Check out pagastonight.com today.